In my previous video, I introduced the ongoing war between the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan. This time around in this video, I want to substantiate and justify my use of a word that was in there last time, because it wasn't just in there for clickbait. Using it where you should not use it can be done at one's own peril. I certainly don't want to diminish the profound importance of the 1915 genocide of the Armenians uh, at the hands of the Ottoman Turks by equating it to some regular old war today. Uh, additionally, given that the will is to de-escalate this conflict of today and prevent further loss of life, a word like genocide should be used carefully because it's a serious accusation and it could escalate things further and that's not the goal. There is a reason why I named that previous video what I named it and there's a reason why I said the word that I said, but first a few reasons why I had hesitated initially. The genocide of the Armenians was something perpetrated by the Ottoman Turks who are long gone now. Uh, until recently, the modern Turkish government was only responsible for the final stage of the genocide, and that is its denial. Indeed, modern-day Turkey has other anti-Armenian policies, destruction of Armenian cultural elements, economic attacks on the modern Republic of Armenia, and so on. But strictly speaking of genocide, uh, the main problem was that they were still in denial mode. But at least they weren't actively slaughtering Armenians still. As for Azerbaijan, uh, with regards to the genocide of 1915, they were not principally involved back then. Uh, Azerbaijan was not a country then. The people that came to be known as Azerbaijan, only with the formation of USSR, were living among Armenians in the Russian Empire, by and large without major issues. Um, throughout the Ottoman and Russian Empire time periods, Christian Armenians and various Muslim populations that ended up being the precursors to, to the Azeris were living among one another geographically, and as those empires fell, Armenians and Azeris were compelled to form nations of their own. Throughout the Russian provinces, some of the towns were mostly Armenian, some towns were evenly split, and some were mostly non-Armenian. And this all speaks to the harmony with which these people once coexisted. Uh, specifically, the mountainous parts of Karabakh were almost entirely Armenian, but quite the opposite in the flatlands surrounding it. Uh, once the USSR stepped in, Given how remote the mountainous parts were from the areas of greater Armenian density, uh, given how ravaged the Armenians were from the genocide, and given that the Turkish powers that were emerging needed some appeasing, the stage was set for Joseph Stalin to divide and rule. And thus we were condemned to disagree eternally on how our cheetah print borders with enclaves and exclaves should be drawn in order to provide for security and connection to the mainland, um, anyway, without re recapping all the details covered in the other video, suffice it to say that the Azeri-Armenian conflict had everything to do with our geography and our former Soviet overlords, and far less to do with uh, the genocidal Ottomans. So this is why I hesitate to call what's happening today genocide. Uh, for Azerbaijan in 2020 to undermine the peace process in trying to get back the buffer zones surrounding Karabakh militarily is wrong and uh, indeed it's illegal, but in principle, it's not genocide. Uh, it's not genocidal. Uh, it's counter to the UN and OSCE Minsk peace process uh, because it's violent and it's senseless, but in theory, it could fall short of genocide. However, there are things we know now about how it's going down in 2020 that we simply can't ignore. Turkey is, is the X factor, more specifically the current militarily adventurous and growingly more and more desperate AK party uh, in Turkey, led by Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. There's a video by Vox that I think really explains well why Erdogan's imperialism is concerning on a global scale. I highly recommend it. And with that video as a basis, uh, one sees that Erdogan now has the confidence and the ambition uh, to tremendously expand his reach and try to rebuild or reform the Ottoman Empire of over 105 years ago. Erdogan's Turkey has a strange obsession with Armenia, which makes no sense whatsoever given that Turkey is a growing country of 80 million with one of the most serious militaries and Armenia is a tiny country of less than 3 million with a, with a serious demographic problem. It's not clear initially why Turkey is so obsessed with Armenia, uh, but perhaps it's because, diminished as Armenia's territory may be, it is still in Turkey's way, geographically. There is no Kurdistan where it was supposed to be per the Treaty of Serbs. There, that's another fight that will continue for decades to come. And while the Nakhichevan region of Azerbaijan has an 8-kilometer border with Turkey, Nakhichevan itself is an exclave of, of Azerbaijan. So there's no land connection between Turkey and Baku. On TRT News, 
which is a Turkish state uh, news agency with a Turkish audience, they flow seamlessly from fake news about the origin on the conflict, the origin of the conflict, into the strategic benefit of taking control of Karabakh. I'll link one such clip in which Elnur Aliyev, I believe he's, he's the Minister of Culture now in Azerbaijan, talks about how they need this land for energy security, which essentially means pipeline security, security for rail and for road, and also for capitalizing on being able to offer Europe an alternative corridor uh, for trade. Uh, you can dig a little deeper as I have, and you can see that Azeri historians believe also that even Zankezur and Talish uh, are also regions that in their mind ought to belong to Azerbaijan, citing short periods of partially inhabiting those places while the Armenian population was experiencing the genocide. And they ignore that, you know, the same could be said for other territories that are now in Azerbaijan proper that also had Armenian populations. So um, there are maps that are actually routinely circulated in Azeri social media circles that show more and more chunks of Armenia annexed into Azerbaijan. It's the worst kept secret that Turkey and Azerbaijan would like to cut Armenia off completely and form the pan-Turkic empire spanning from Turkey across the Caspian to Turkmenistan and Tajikistan. And Erdogan's distaste for Armenia is no secret either. His rhetoric is ramping up. Here's something that he said recently. We will continue to fulfill this mission, which our grandfathers have carried out for centuries in the Caucasian again. Erdogan simultaneously denies the genocide ever happened while vowing to repeat it. Erdogan wasn't always this way, but now he is. Maybe it's because he's pandering to nationalist sentiment among a voting bloc that he needs now. Uh, maybe it's just that he feels that the time has finally come for him to shoot his shot and restore the Ottoman Empire over 100 years ago. Either way, it's compelling him to posture against the Armenians, keeping his hands clean by getting the Azeris to do it, and make sure it all blows over well by forging other new alliances with the Russians. Um, the defining feature of this war with Azer Azerbaijan has been the Turkish manufactured unmanned aerial vehicles, the Baikar TB2 as it's known. These are the ones that are equipped with advanced optics that the Canadian government shamefully permitted for export uh, amidst lobbying from Turkey, amidst Canada coming to know these might get diverted to Azerbaijan, indeed they did, and Canadian law prohibits that. Uh, this is essentially a huge Canadian scandal in brew. But that's another story. So Turkey's specialists that operate these drones, their supply of these drones, and their supply of their personnel, including Syrian paid jihadist militants, uh, that's the reason why this war is happening and that's why it's claiming so many lives. Uh, these drones unleash essentially, they're essentially a robotic killing machine in the sky that can rain death on defensive positions, on soldiers, on tanks, on air defenses, and so on. In Baku, these horrifying scenes have become a point of patriotism and pride. Aliyev can take human lives from the comfort of remote drone operating room instead of such arduous tasks as negotiations and peace talks. For fear of dating this video too much, I can say that as of the recording date, Turkey has openly announced another 1,200 specialist military personnel to be deployed. You can check for yourself to see what other enabling resources Turkey has advanced to Azerbaijan since the date of this recording. Um, there's a video put out by a pro-Turkey YouTube commentator with a sizable following named the Mo Freedom Foundation. His video is linked upstairs too. This guy defends Erdogan in most instances, but in this case, however, his video will intersect with mine. He is mystified at why Turkey is committing this unintelligent and cruel blunder. That video is excellent for the reading, and I'll be watching more and more of uh, Mo Freedom Foundation's channel going forward. So we can see that in this situation, the Azeris are simply the ones executing, uh, the executioners, if you will, of this genocide, which is not completely of their own design. There's some irony here for those of you familiar with the history of the Armenian genocide, because back in 1915, much of the genocidal tasks were actually carried out by Kurds, who were essentially tricked into doing the dirty work on the pretext of being the brethren of the Turks. Um, we saw how that worked out for them. The parallels to today's Azeris makes me feel something that I can't quite put into words. Um, I wish they would see the situation for what it is and how they fit into someone else's plans, especially as Turkey finds new reserves of gas in the Black Sea. And I wonder how promptly the Turks will discard the Azeris once there is no further energy dependence on Baku. Also, to be clear, I don't think this genocide is the design of the quote-unquote of the Turks either. 
It's simply the design of some Turks, probably a very small number of them. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is at the helm, but I sincerely believe most of the Turks think that this whole thing is absurd and Turkey should not get involved. I personally have met quite a few uh, people from Turkey who would rather integrate into Europe and into the West and they would rather the genocide be recognized and Armenians treated better in a meaningfully constructive economic relationship with modern Republic of Armenia, which is actually a dynamic and energetic country with significant trade potential. Sadly, that's not what's going on right now, quite the opposite. And the fact that Turkey's policy of subjugating and suppressing Armenians is the clear driver of the quote unquote war, that is the basis on which I relate what is happening on the ground in Harapach as genocide. But it doesn't end there. Um, outside of the Turkish involvement, some things have been observed that quantify the situation as genocide anyway, outside of the Turkish involvement. For one, the will that President Aliyev has to go beyond the seven territories and destroy Nagorno-Karabakh proper is where you see a will to destroy an Armenian population of significant size. Let's face it, it's been day after day after day of shelling the civilian regions of Stepanagert and Shushi. There's no military, there are no military objects there. There were, there were no, those aren't occupied buffer zone uh, territories. Uh, they weren't, these were the territories that were supposed to be defined by a referendum, a legally binding expression of will. Aliyev has taken such freedom away. He's broken down that mechanism by means of killing, terrorizing and destroying, using the cruelest of means, using indiscriminate cluster bombs, which are banned. Um, he's using persons who are convinced that they are fighting a holy war. Uh, his rhetoric has made it clear he wants Arapal that is free of Armenians. That right there earns Mr. Aliyev his very own personal accusation of genocide, not shared with Erdogan or anyone else, all for himself. And this is why on October 22nd, 2020, Nathaniel Hill and Gregory Stanton of Genocide Watch had seen enough. They published on the Genocide website, Genocide Watch considers Azerbaijan to be at stage 9, extermination, and stage 10, denial. Actually, the explanation for this, which is linked in the description down below, cites another reason that earns Aliyev a spot among the few genocidal perpetrators in all of the world's history, and that is the official use of hate speech. Uh, the most telling example of what's been going on in Azerbaijan the last 30 years uh, in terms of hate speech is the story of Azeri hero Ramel Safarov. In 2004, Ramel Safarov was a 26-year-old who had traveled to Budapest, Hungary to study English language courses as part of a NATO Partnership for Peace program for military personnel from, from different countries. There were two Armenian officers there too, Gurken Margarian and Haig Mukuchian, Makuchian. They all stayed in a dorm together, uh, two people to a room, and it was supposed to be for three months. Safarov went out one night in January, bought an axe, sharpened it, and waited for 5 a.m walked over to Kurken Margarian's room and delivered 16 blows to his body, killing him and nearly severing his head. Safarov was completely without remorse. In fact, he walked over to Haig Makuchian's room, uh, but that was locked. And Safarov told the other people on the floor that had woken up that he meant nobody any harm and he only thirsted for Armenian blood. Before he can break Haig's door down, cops showed up, Safarov was taken away. Um, the trial that ensued revealed that there was no personal issues or relationship between Safarov and either of the two Armenians. They had not argued, they had not had any interactions. Safarov was just compelled to kill Armenians and that is what his upbringing uh, compelled him to do. Now you might think that he's an exception and maybe even the people that praised his actions, and there were many, uh, maybe the people that praised his actions were exceptions as well. But let's look at what happened in 2012 eight years into Safarov's life sentence. Uh, he was transferred to Azerbaijan to serve the rest of his sentence there. Why Hungary did this is something you can look up on your own and, and your jaw might drop, but back to Safarov. He got to Azerbaijan and well, let's just say he didn't go to jail. Quite the opposite, in fact. He was immediately pardoned and widely celebrated for his, quote, courage. He was given eight years back pay, a promotion within the military ranks to major, and the title of a hero and an apartment. I couldn't make this up if I tried. President Aliyev announced that, quote, justice had been restored. Uh, they spun a narrative that the Armenians in the program had insulted the Azeri flag, but Safarov was quite clear during the trial that no such thing happened, and he did what he did out of his own hate, and he only wished that he was more prepared so he could have killed Haig as well, or ideally more Armenians. 
Um, his canonization in Azerbaijan is the epitome of promoting hatred and racism at a state level. Safarov was converted into an example of how Azeris should feel about Armenians and how brutally they should murder them lest they ever meet one. I'll go on too long if I dwell on this topic of state-designed hatred for Armenians. There is evidence that they are taught to hate Armenians in kindergarten. Uh, here's another tweet by Aliyev. It's just one of many. Armenia is not even a colony. It's not even worthy of being a servant. Uh, you can read current taunts, provocations, and death threats on Twitter in the replies of any journalists, in the replies to any journalists that dare cover the conflict of today. YouTube filters the ones that I got on my previous video, but they did come in, and I'm sure there will be more. In Baku, the drone footage of dying Armenians has become something celebrated, like a spectator sport. Armenians are called dogs there. The newest Azeri domestically produced drone is named the Dog Chaser. Uh, many Azeris expressed their distaste and impatience for the peace process by which Karapal was supposed to be sorted out by now, but the reality is that with such severe disgust for Armenians at the state level is precisely why it's been completely impossible to carry out any of the elements of the Madrid principles. Um, USA, Russia, France, they all had official commentary on the Safarov case. You can read those statements. They knew that they couldn't just tell, you know, as Minsk group co-chairs, they couldn't just tell Armenia to uh, let down their guard, open their doors and have Azeris live among them and try to get along until it's time for a referendum. So why did this hate uh, fester? Why did it come about? Because for Ilham Aliyev, it's personal. He made it fester. Of course, it stems initially from Azerbaijan's defeat in a war which not only did they fail to control Karabakh for the first time, they also lost the buffer zone. But that same leadership that was in charge then is essentially the same that's in charge now. President Aliyev, uh, Ilham Aliyev, inherited the post from his father and he sees enmity with, the Ar with Armenians as a means to remain in power. Bringing his country into closer and closer alliance with Turkey, who is a customer for his oil, makes political and economic sense. So does crushing dissent and keeping internally displaced people in poverty, uh, controlling the media, the education system. So Aliyev's family has advanced the narrative that concentrates on the brutality of the 90s war, instills fear of Armenians, and suggests that simply permitting Azerbaijan's advanced weaponry to stamp the Armenians out is what ought to happen. In the Armenians, the Azeri psyche finds a practical place for their distaste uh, for the Russians as well who they may dislike as well, but they have to live with as a global superpower. Russia, which has real political benefit in keeping the Azeris and Armenians at odds with each other now, is uh, not without fault as well with the persistence of Azeri hate towards Armenians, but ultimately the fault lies with the oppressive and brutal dictatorial government of Azerbaijan. Expressing any sympathy towards Armenians will essentially land you in jail in Azerbaijan. Aliyev's Azerbaijan has over 100 imprisoned journalists and political prisoners. Aliyev's Azerbaijan has one of the worst human rights, media freedom, and democracy records in Europe. So what's the end result? Um, what does it translate into? Azeri soldiers mutilate prisoners of war, recording videos of their dead corpses being shot by firing squads. They taunt the family members of the fallen on the Telegram app with images clutching the severed heads of the captured and fallen brother. I'm not putting these images up so as to prevent this video from being taken down on the grounds of showing such content, uh, but it wouldn't take you long to find it for yourself on Twitter with some censoring or the real deal on Telegram. So I hope this explains the basis of why this isn't just a war for land, it's a fight for survival. It has to be understood that calling it, uh, calling it an extension of a genocide isn't really important now, practically important. As we live in a world where we don't intervene any differently when, it's a, when, it, when the genocide bell rings anyway, uh, in the short term, the actual outcome of this, uh, of this fight will be driven by political and military strategy. In the grander scheme of things, however, in a world that is far larger than Armenia and Artsakh, the world has come to see that Presidents Erdogan and Aliyev have, have crossed a certain line. Um, what's happening now is an attempt at sustaining and completing a genocide, and it's up to each of us to give meaning to the words, never again. I think I might have another video or two in me on this conflict. Please talk to me in the comments. Any questions or suggestions are all welcome. And please toss me a like and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.